Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this Facebook live chat. I am WPTV multimedia journalist, Josh Navarro, and we're here to talk about cruises. When are they gonna set sail? What can we expect once they do? We're gonna be answering all of your questions. So be sure to also type in your questions uh, that you may have and tell us the last time you probably went on a cruise and where, and if you were able to go on a cruise today, would you do it? But without further ado, please welcome Michelle Fee, CEO and founder of Cruise Planners. Good afternoon, Michelle. Thank you so much for taking time today. Hey, Josh, how are you? Nice to be on your station. Doing well, doing well. So tell us a little bit about, you know, a lot of people are waiting to go back on cruises. You know, hotels are back open, restaurants are back open. Uh, you can go to theme parks now. When will cruises, what's the timeline? What are you hearing through the pipeline? Well, I think that's the $64,000 question. I mean, <laughs> at this point, unfortunately, you know, the cruise industry is waiting to hear back from the CDC. Um, over this past year, the cruise lines have not been sitting idle. They've kind of been singled out, uh, you know, in my humble opinion. And it would be nice if the CDC would set a date and say, okay, as of this date, you will be able to sail out of a U.S. port. Um, unfortunately, you know, we haven't gotten the green light yet. So, you know, we're, the cruise industry is just waiting. Um, as soon as that happens, believe me, they are ready. They've been putting time and effort into, you know, making sure again, the number one priority is that their crew and their passengers remain safe while sailing. Right on. And what's going to be like the new normal? Are people going to be required to wear masks, uh, possibly uh, show if they got the vaccine or not? Uh, social distancing, what's going to be, I guess, in theory, what you, what we can all expect once we board on ship, once it's open. Right. So this past year, like I said, the cruise lines have not been sitting idly. They've been creating a healthy sales panel to make sure that once, you know, the passenger does board the ship, that they do have all the protocols in place. Um, safety on board is their number one priority. Again, first and foremost, all the crew members from what we hear will be vaccinated. So that's a good thing because that will immediately, you know, help with herd immunity. Masks, we're wearing them in our everyday lives, right? We're wearing them to grocery stores, workplaces, school, wherever we're going. You're going to have to, on the onset of cruising, probably wear a mask for the time being. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to have to wear a mask when you, you know, sit down for dinner as you do here. Uh, we're not sure yet, you know, if you're going to need a mask in the pool or a hot tub or, you know, walking around the outside, uh, you know, you know, in the, on a ship, we're not exactly sure what's going to happen there, but in the theaters, you know, families will sit together, but there will be lots of empty rows surrounding them. And then I always laugh because the number one question is, what about the buffet? Is the buffet going away? And the answer is no, the buffet is not going away. I'll bet it's going to be a little differently. So you're not going to be able to touch the food or use a utensil. The crew member will be back behind the counter. They will pile your plates as high as you'd like. Great thing is they're vaccinated. You know, they will have masks. You know, they, you know, they will be in, and have the utmost safety for the passengers on board. There will be enhanced screening. So before you leave your home, you're going to have to have a COVID test and bring a negative result. When you get to peer side, they will test you again and make sure you have a negative result. And then, of course, you know, a requirement of getting back into the U.S. if you go into international waters is then to have another test, which they'll, they'll have on board ships when you come back into the U.S., so there's a lot going on behind the scenes, but this is all to help mitigate that risk and keep you as safe as possible. Uh, you did touch on the, the question I wanted to ask about the buffets and all the food service, because a lot of people look forward to the buffets. Um, is it going to depend, what are you hearing? Is it going to depend on which cruise line, how they're gonna operate, or is it basically across the board, uh, you know, sitting like in a dining room, uh, dining restaurant setting where the waiter comes to your table back and forth or is it just them serving you the food like uh down the line of a, cap a school cafeteria line if you will 
So you'll get the same dining experience that you would have a year ago or a year from now. It's all going to be the same dining experience. So if you're sitting down in a restaurant, you will get served as you do here stateside. But when you go to the buffet, obviously that is probably going to be the only food venue that's a little bit affected. Uh, what about cleaning? What about uh, making sure all the high touch places are cleaned on a regular basis? What are you hearing through the pipeline about that? So just like it always was, I don't know if you've ever been on board a ship, but it's probably one of the cleanest modes of transportation I've ever been on. Obviously, they are going to up it to another level. I know there's new cleaning products that if you put them on certain areas, they last, you know, 24 to 48 hours. So even though multiple people touch it, they don't leave behind any germs. It kills the germs on touch. So there's some high tech things that are going on. Most cruise lines will have like a bracelet or they call it a tracelet. So it kind of looks like an Apple watch and it will trace you as you know, you're, you're going around the ship. So if in fact you do get COVID, it knows who you've been in contact with, again, mitigating that risk of spread. And you know, there is enhanced medical resources on board as well. So if a, ha a passenger happens to get COVID, they will remove the passenger from that general public in a quarantined area that will keep everyone safe. You know, a year ago, I know we saw things on the news that, you know, hazmat suits, cruise ships, um, you know, they just didn't know much about COVID. No one did. But a year later, thankfully, we know a lot more. And they will make sure that when, you know, passengers board their ships, that they are in one of the safest places they can be. All right, right on, Michelle. Michelle, we do have a question. Uh, well, we have a comment right here, Teresa LeClaire. Cruising is fantastic and we are ready. Let's get these ships sailing soon. So everybody's eager. It's like uh, spring break is right now. A lot of people yeah. would go on cruise ships. Uh, but also I'd like to pull up this question from Sandy Lawrence. Will pools and hot tubs be open? From what we're hearing, yes. I just don't know whether you're going to need a mask of sorts to be in them. But from what we're hearing at this point, yes. And by the way, cruising is happening in Europe already. And so the protocols are all put in place. And so the good news is, you know, they're working through them and they have worked extremely well as there's not been, knock wood, an outbreak on a cruise ship since all these protocols have been put in place. What is the difference between the U.S. and the Euro European? What, what, what are things they're doing over there different than what we're doing over here for them to go on these cruises now that you've mentioned? Well, the biggest thing is there's, you know, their um, CDC, I don't know what they're called over in Europe, is allowing cruising to happen, where over here it's the CDC that's, you know, um, hasn't quite yet come to the table and given the green light for us to sail out of a U.S. port. Okay, uh, we have another question. Joanne Wes uh, Garther, uh, please discuss shore excursions. Will that still be allowed when you go travel to different parts of the country? Is that, what are you hearing about that? So we're hearing that there's gonna be these little bubbles on the onset of cruising. So what they're going to do is they're gonna contain it and control it. So when you get off a particular in a particular destination, they will bring you on, you know, a bus or a, one form of transportation and they will take you on the shore excursions. Now, we've heard that there are some cruise lines that 100 percent of the of the passengers are going to be vaccinated. So they're you know, they're they're not exactly sure, like if that happens and you know, others follow when they get to those ports of a call. Can, if you're vaccinated, can you go off and walk the streets or, you know, jump in a taxi and do your own thing? So those are still some of the little details that, you know, they're still working out. Okay, and there's another viewer question here um, uh, from, so where is it? I lost my place here. Oh, Teresa, there we go. Should I book my cruise now? You what should you book that? your cruise right now because I'm going to tell you why. It's called supply and demand. And when the cruise lines get the green light, they're not going to turn on a switch and all of their ships are going to be put back in the water and in place and ready to uh, welcome passengers. It takes about 60 to 90 days per ship 
to get it ready for passengers to board it. So, you know, when they, on the onset, you know, each cruise line might have one or two ships that are ready to go. And then subsequently after, you know, each month they'll add two to three ships until the full fleets are all sailing, all cylinders go. And I could tell you that's a day that we will be excited when we hear that, but it won't go from zero ships to a hundred ships mm -hmm. overnight. It's going to be gradual. You know, the thing is there's going to be limited capacity. So on the onset of cruising, you're, they're not going to fill the ships a hundred percent. You know, they're going to be very limited. So again, the supply and the demand, um, we, I can tell you that 2022 is booking solidly. We are well ahead of where we were when we were going from 18 into 19 and 19 into 20. So if you're thinking about traveling next year, book it now. I think some of the seasonal destinations like Alaska and Europe, you know, if you think about it, we're losing. Uh, most cruise lines have uh, canceled cruises up until July 31st. And so, you know, people haven't been able to cruise for almost a year and a half. So we call this revenge travel is where they're taking all their vacation funds and there's, you know, could be up to three years. You know, if, if you haven't gone to Alaska and there's three years of pent up demand, can you imagine what it's going to and how quickly it's going to sell out for 2022? It's going to sell out real quickly. So I always say book it now. If rates go down, you, you know, you're protected. Um, a lot of the cancellation penalties are very flexible at this point. But right. one thing, once things get back to normal, those cancellation penalties go back to what they were before. So to me, green light for all of you is pick up your phone and call your travel advisor. Yeah, we're getting a lot of questions from viewers asking, shall I book a cruise now? Shall I call my travel agent right now? And I guess you did answer that question because they are going to start filling up fast, aren't they? And they are, and they need to be aware that there's a lot of protocols and restrictions that are required to travel, not just on the cruises, but on the air travel as well. And so if you call your travel advisor, they can help guide you through this to make sure that you know, you're going to have the right paperwork and all the things that you need to when you get to and are able to travel to your, you know, your favorite destination again. Uh, Vicki Garcia asks, should I book through a travel agent or direct with the cruise line? Do not book direct. You know, again, the travel advisors are up to key. They know exactly what you need to uh, board the ship as well as, you know, get into different countries. You know, I mean, there's uh, Greece, for instance. Greece has opened up to all travelers, but you have to be vaccinated. And, you know, how do you show proof? What do you need? So call your travel advisor because that travel advisor can absolutely help you with all of the things that you, you know, you, there's so many websites out there with such misleading information. So you wanna make sure you have the right information before you travel. All right, uh, we did have a question about kids and children camps on cruise lines. Uh, where they still offer those types of programs? What are you hearing through the pipeline so far? So um, I suspect at some point, yes, I'm not exactly sure when cruising begins, if that's going to happen. That is not something that we've had, you know, emailed to us or, you know, we've been able to read up on. So not quite sure, but if you're looking to plan a trip for next year or later this year, absolutely. I'm, I'm pretty positive they will be open. Now, I know a lot of cruise lines have a lot of shows. Would, would, would they still be entertainment on the on the ships? They'll absolutely be in entertainment. You know, obviously, cruise lines don't want you to have a lesser experience. So when you board a ship, they want that same experience that you would have had pre-COVID. So when you board again, I said, you know, when you're in the theater watching a show, you know, on the onset, of cruising, they're going to have a lesser capacity. So there's less people on board and, you know, social distancing. So your family will sit in a row and then maybe the row behind you will be empty. And I've also been told that if they have to do a third show, they'll do a third show, but they will make sure that the experience on board is just as great as it was pre-COVID. All right, Teresa says, I'm ready for a revenge vacation. This is so informative. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that's why we're here for. So if you guys have any other questions, continue to uh, 
uh, type them in. Um, if I'm not ready to go on a cruise, where else can I go? Someone uh, is asking that on the thread. You know, right now it's pretty limited. I will tell you the hot spots are, you know, uh, warm vacations at this point. I know everybody up north is clamoring to get away, but um, for us here in Florida, um, Mexico and Caribbean, those are probably the top two spots at this point. But USA travel has picked up quite a bit as well, going to see national parks, going out west over the summertime, those are things that uh, people are doing. Hawaii's, you know, clicked back up to the top of the list where it had fallen, you know, over the years to other types of travel. All right, someone um, on the thread is asking if vaccines will be mandatory. I think we did touch on this, but if, if that's something you would, um, is that something that people are going to need? Like you mentioned, it depends on which country they are going to, correct? That's correct. But I uh, honestly get your vaccine. That's what we're telling people this. Come on, you, because you, the world will open up and I see it. And, and, you know, it looks like it's going in that direction that people who are vaccinated are going to have more opportunities to travel than those who aren't. All right. Andrew Schultz, uh, Schultz is saying I'm vaccinated and can't wait to go on a cruise. He's ready to go. Where would you go, Andrew? Where's a, where's a really good popular place to go pre-COVID, I guess, on cruises? Where where people usually oh, want to go? Uh, everywhere, you know, <laughs> Alaska, Europe, river cruising. Uh, obviously Caribbean is always um, a fan favorite. Uh, masks, let's touch uh, touch again about masks. Are, going, are masks going to be required on, on board? So again, I think when cruising begins again, yes, I am pretty confident in the fact that just like we wear masks today in our everyday lives, we're going to have to wear it on board a ship until further notice. And, you know, when we don't have to wear masks anymore in our everyday lives here in the States, I'm assuming the cruise lines will follow. However, there are cruise lines that are talking about it that are um, there's a couple cruise lines that are requiring vaccinated only passengers. They're not allowing anybody else on board. Do you need a mask? So those are things that are being talked about right now. All right, we have some comments here. Um, yeah, counting the minutes until mm -hmm. I can get back on a cruise from Jules. Me Danielle too, says Aruba is a good place. Ana Carolina, Hawaii. Ashley, Lady Luck. I love the Bahamas, especially Nassau. So we got a lot of people waiting to go on these cruises. Me too, me too. <laughs> uh, hygiene, as far as like consistently wash your hands, hand sanitizers on cruise ships, how important is it to keep clean? Uh, just like your everyday lives. And, the, you know, they'll make sure there's stations all over the ship. And I got to tell you, they had a pre-COVID. You know, there were uh, hand washing stations and, and, you know, all kinds of things like that all over the ship pre-COVID just to make sure, you know, because they know people are in a contained area. And they, again, number one priority is to make sure that their passengers are healthy and safe, as well as the crew. All right, we have another question from our here on Facebook Live. Brianna has heard they are around the world cruises. Are these really a thing? Yes, absolutely. And here's the funny part. You're not even going to be able to go until 2024. Because, no. <laughs> yeah, the world cruises have been so popular. You know, the mature traveler has been vaccinated or has access to the vaccine already. And they realized that the world cruise was canceled two years in a row. So again, it's that revenge travel. It's that pent up demand. It's like, I'm going to rebook. And so 2022 and 2023 are pretty sold out unless somebody cancels should be put on a wait list. So the pent up demand is real. And that's why I'm saying anyone who is looking to travel, you know, end of year, beginning of or any time in 2022, get yourselves booked. You have to right, put Joe. a small deposit. And again, they're being very flexible with the cancellation policies. All right, we have a comment, Joanne, can't wait. I'm booked and ready to go on several, she says. Yeah. Um, Michelle, there's a lot of people just tuning in right now. We're with uh, Michelle Fee, CEO and founder of Cruise Planners. Um, if you're just joining us, a lot of people are asking, when will cruises be back, set sail again? Um, just to reiterate, 
because we have folks that are just tuning in. So, you know, again, I said it was a $64,000 question. We just don't know. We're waiting for the CDC to give us the green light to go. All other modes of transportation are, you know, back in business. Uh, I do feel like, and this is just my humble opinion, that the cruise industry has been unfairly focused on. And we are truly hoping that any day now they come through and start giving the cruise lines directions on the protocols that need to be completed before they can get back in the water. Um, someone is asking about, um, hold on one second here, Crystal Cruises is now sailing where? This is from uh, Caitlin Katie Murphy Gardner. Okay, they're um, going to start sailing in June and they are sailing from Nassau and they'll do some smaller islands or, you know, in the Bahamas and they're back in business and they are one of the lines that you will need a vaccine in order to board their ship. Um, if a person did have COVID beforehand and now been vaccinated, will they be able to get on the ship? I'm assuming so. The vaccination and the vaccine is what's going to, that's your ticket. That's your golden ticket to start traveling. That's why we keep saying to our customers, get vaccinated. <laughs> um, what's one of your favorite cruises you've ever gone on, Michelle? I always get that question. Here's my favorite answer. It's the one I'm on, right? I've never been on a bad cruise. So wherever I am with whomever I'm, I'm on with, I'm enjoying myself. So, you know, I'm a grandmother. So sometimes when I take my kids on, you know, one of those bigger fun ships, I'm excited and I enjoy myself with that. But then sometimes I go on maybe a little bit more of a luxury line with my husband and I, and we enjoy them as well. But I love cruising and cruising the world is fabulous. You know, it's one of those vacations that you feel like when you get there and unpack, you're on vacation the whole time. You don't have to repack and you don't have to get your luggage out in front of your room at a certain time. It's like, you know, at, when you're done touring for the day, you come back on the ship, you have your cocktail and off you're up and you're off to the next port of call. <laughs> Cocktails are fun. <laughs> um, what about like, for example, like Disney cruises, they have a lot of hands-on interactive things. Um, do you expect things would possibly roll out differently? Uh, cruise lines that are, you know, family oriented with kids and such? Yeah, I think again, just like what's going on in our everyday lives, you know, schools have opened, they've opened safely, especially here in Florida. So again, there's gonna be protocols put in place and, you know, again, we don't know what all the little details are yet. I'm only hearing high level, uh, but I'm, I assure you that they're not going to do anything that would, two things, put you, you know, in, in a position of not being safe or put you in a position of not really enjoying your cruise. So all both right. of them are priorities. Right on. Uh, Michelle, four, I guess, big takeaways for folks um, for during this chat as we are awaiting for the CDC to give us a timeline when crews can set sail. What would be four big takeaways? Okay, book now, right now, as soon as this ends. <laughs> Number two, make sure you're booking with a travel agent. They will help guide you. Number three, make sure you're vaccinated. It's your golden ticket to travel. Um, no, uh, you said four, I have to come up with four. The three or four are like a big takeaways. Just give it to me. <laughs> you know, oh, revenge travel. There we go. Number four is revenge travel. You know, buy that vacation that you've had on your bucket list for years because you haven't been going anywhere but your backyard for the past year and a half. All right, Michelle, thank you so much for joining us here on this Facebook live chat. I really appreciate it. I hope we got to answer everyone's questions that they have regarding when cruise ships are gonna go back to sail. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank everyone. Thank you so much for putting your comments, your questions. Thank you so much. Be sure to click and like the channel and also share it on your social media platforms on Facebook. Thank you so much, everybody. And I hope everyone has a great day today. Thank you so much. Happy travels.